o'clock. I had everything set up and then it told me it failed at the last minute, so at least we're still on time. So I don't know where you are, but it's hot where I am here in central Pennsylvania. And I'm going to allow myself to think about fall. <laughs> I've been trying not to think about fall coming. I know everybody gets excited about pumpkins and stuff. Um, but I just wanted to enjoy summer. <laughs> but you know what? It's really hot and fall's going to come anyway. So in the retail world, we have to get ready for these things. <laughs> but we're going to have fun tonight because we're going to play with some balls. <laughs> have a couple of them here and we're going to uh, I have no idea this is just uh, something I just decided to try and uh, we'll see if it works we're gonna make pumpkins out of these balls and some fabric so I have the glue gun heating and we're also going to do a pillow cover um, with a Dixie Belle stencil and an Ikea pillow cover so I'm um, glad you came and I hope you enjoy what we're doing this evening so I picked up some gorgeous fabric at Joann's. So look at this fabric. Isn't this beautiful? I just saw it and I thought it was just so pretty. So um, I also got some really cool flannel. I love that too. I really think it's pretty. So um, I think these will be great fabrics for us to make these pumpkins with. So let's get started. So I'm going to put the screen down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, so let's start with the smaller one because I feel more confident about that one. So these are just little, um, they're, they're the ends of my transfer tubes, but you could use anything. You could use like a milk bottle lid or a jar lid. We just need something flat so that it's not going to roll all over the place. So I do have my, my hot glue gun going and I don't want to do too much with the hot glue because I don't want to melt any of this plastic or these balls because that wouldn't be any fun. But I just want it lightly and it looks like I need to put another glue stick in there. I had it sitting the whole time waiting and then I ended up with a pile of glue so um, I'll try that again there we go we're getting some glue I just want to put some on here and not melt anything okay so we'll just set that on there a minute and hopefully our ball won't deflate Okay, so now we have a bottom. Okay, so I want to use this this fabric on the small ball. So I'm thinking the best thing to do is going to be to cut this in half. This is a quarter yard. Um, I was kind of maybe dumb of me. It's like 57 inches wide, but I thought a quarter yard would be enough, but I really wasn't thinking. So I'm just going to cut it in half. Just gonna follow my instincts. Of course, we're going lengthwise. And these aren't the best fabric cutting shears. So I hope your day is going well and uh, your week so far. Okay, I'm gonna cut this little uh, selvage edge off of the fabric. So I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work up at the top. I also picked a stick, a couple sticks to put in there and I have a whole bunch of florals over here that I'll show you and we'll pick something that'll look really pretty with this pumpkin. Again, not sure how this is going to work. I'm really anxious for the Dollar Tree to come out with those styrofoam pumpkins because I know exactly how I would work that situation. but. We'll figure it out, I'm sure. So we have two pieces here and our base. So I'm thinking the best thing to do is to make this kind of like a cross. So we have two sides to pull up and then kind of gather around the pumpkin. 
See, I'm calling it a pumpkin already, and it's just a ball. So, um, let's just kind of dry fit this up here. I'm hoping to gather it, so, so far I don't have a whole lot to gather, but, um, All right, again, we'll make it work. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here just to hold it. That may or may not have been a good idea. Like I said, we're just kind of going, just figuring this out as we go along. Okay, I get a little gathering there. I'll do the same thing on this side so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of pulling it up, bunching it up, gathering it a little bit. We'll be getting rid of the excess fabric up here, but I'm, right now I'm just kind of seeing how this is going to work. Yeah, I see us getting gathering. Okay, let's, let's go after it, and we're just going to do it a little bit slow. So... Um, so we're going to start with this side and just pull the fabric up, kind of a glue string on my face. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to pull the fabric up and gather it a little bit. And I guess we should use a little glue. Again, I'm afraid of putting too much on this ball. gather a little bit more here okay we I know we're gonna end up cutting this excess fabric off but I'm not ready to do it yet okay I want to pull a little bit more fabric up and I want to do it like I said so we get a gather here Okay, so let's start with this fabric, pulling it up. Isn't this fabric just gorgeous? Okay, I want to make sure, like, if you can see it over here, we still have that raw edge, which I should have cut off. It's not too late, but I think we can disguise it in here. So we'll end up gluing any excess fabric that's just kind of hanging out. My original thought was that we should have a gum band and that might not have been a bad idea. But now I don't have one here so I'm just going to um, I think I'll tie it with some jute. It could be interactive here and you could tell me what to do next. <laughs> Again, I'm using the Streamlabs and I still haven't uh, figured out how to do chat with it. So I can't see your comments right now. So we'll get this up here and hold it with the jute, and then we'll make some adjustments. So, I don't know what I mentioned about going on around the Alleghenies tomorrow, but I have to do fall, fall decor, fall display. So that's part of my reason for doing the pumpkins. But basically, since this is going on TV tomorrow, it has to look good. So we got to figure this out. All right, so here's what we got so far. A loosely wrapped ball. I'm gonna tilt this up a little. I don't think you're seeing everything properly. Okay, that might be a little bit better. Okay, so we still have that end that it sits on. All right, so I'm gonna trim some of this fabric. And hopefully that's not a mistake. 
it just kind of needs to get out of the way. And we're going to be covering it. We're going to be putting some flowers on here. So I think it'll be okay. So our channel's been growing. We're up to, I think, 766 at last count. Um, I encountered some wonderful people um, from all over the world, actually, and we're going to be doing an Ugly Duckling Challenge, so I am super excited about that. I'm working on my project, and I'm almost done with it, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so see how we have this fabric that's hanging down here. I'm going to just use the hot glue and just kind of tuck that in. Try not to burn myself. I think just because the fabric's like loosely folded and kind of a thinner fabric that we can get away with that. Okay, now, here's a problem. <laughs> My top is off center because <laughs> that's where my base is and I glued it so I can't really move it. And I cut this so I can't, I don't have a whole lot of slack there. Oh boy. Um, I am going to glue this some more here. That way if we have to undo it, um, Ow, 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 burning myself. Be ever so careful. That hurt. Live, live video, you know. Not a hospital visit or anything, but it really hurt. Okay. I don't know whether that was skin I just peeled off or glue. I'm not really sure. Because that, that really hurt. I think it's glue. I think I'll live. All right. I also think I could probably go rub bags tonight because I don't think I have any uh, fingerprint left. But okay. And that's still hot. Wait. That's a high temp glue gun. Be careful, folks. All right. I'm gonna untie this because we can always glue it because it's just way off center. But now that it has some folds in it, it's going to be a little difficult. But that's me. That's, that's the way things go sometimes. Yeah, I really burnt myself. It's stinging. show must go on, right? <laughs> okay, I think I need a new piece of twine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a big old blister there real soon. <laughs> That's probably the worst uh, hot glue burn I've ever had. All right, so this time I'm going to try to keep it up to the top. I can feel my fingertips. see how we're doing there in relation to the bottom. I think we're okay. Okay. Looks like a hot mess right now, I think, but but I think we'll get it. Um, okay. 
again, we're going to bring up some of this loose fabric very carefully. I want to cover that um, salvage edge with the writing on it. I think I'm going to use my scissors. So the fabric is thin. Probably should have gone in there, but we'll use the hot glue. expect this to be complicated. I thought this would be a real quick, quick and easy uh, one, two, three, like wrap it up and here we go. I think if I would have had more fabric, it would have been, but the fact that I was being so miserly, okay, I'm trying to keep it on its base. Um, I'm going to take some of these tails here and try to gather this stuff, this excess fabric in again and put another tie in it. Ah, oh, and more hot glue. Jeez. I'm really... I might be going to the ER before it's all said and done here. We have another one to do. We have the plaid flannel one. <laughs> okay, so again, here's the bottom, but let's just lay this down on its side and try to get rid of some of these fabric pieces and make them a little more gathered looking. Again, I'm going to try to do it carefully. So I've hot glue on the scissors now, but that's much better than on my hands. So what is your favorite thing about fall? Let me know in the comments what you like. Do you like to do crafting? Or do you get into baking? Or what's your fall thing? Hot chocolate? Festivals are fun. I'm not as much of a festival person as I used to be ever since I have the store. I guess because when there's festivals, people are all at the festival and they're not in my store. <laughs> so um, that's part of it. But... Our store's kind of like a festival every day because we have all those vendors. We have over 40 vendors in our store. All handcrafted. Not everything is handcrafted, um, but they're all local business people providing the merchandise. but we certainly have a lot of cool handcrafted and upcycled stuff. So if you haven't ever seen our store, there's a video on here one time. I, I think it's called the third time is the charm or something. But anyway, I did a video tour of the store. So here's what we've got. Um, there's 
I definitely would rather see this all gathered up rather than it looking like that on the side, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, so again, we have excess fabric up at the top and our gathered part is actually up at the top. So I'm gonna cut this excess off. kind of feeling the pumpkin thing all right so let's try so I'm using the darker um, twig that I have here and I'll use the lighter one on the the other fabric just for a little more contrast so I'm just gonna try to find a center in here try to make a hole in here there there's a good spot okay so I'm gonna put some glue down in here And just work this stick down in there. Just let it sit a minute. All right, and let's embellish this. So here's some things that I have. I have this floral pick with an acorn, and that would be too much yellow, I think. I have uh, some sunflowers, again, too much yellow, I think. Here's something pretty, um, some mums, that would look pretty with it, I think, but they come in a couple different colors. So maybe let's do a couple different mums, see how that works. Now these scissors are not the best, but I'll really kill them if I try to cut flowers with them. And these flowers were from the Dollar Tree, so they're probably going to break off real easily just because of that fact. I like things in odd numbers, so maybe we'll, have, we'll decide, we'll cut three of the white ones and then um, decide whether we want more red or more white flowers. Scoot those leaves up there. That was easy. I haven't been able to say that a whole lot lately. <laughs> so that felt good. Just go through time sometimes when things are a little more challenging. So it seems like it's that's the way it's been this week for me. All right, let's start putting some of these flowers in here and I'm just gonna cover up that excess fabric. And you know what, we could get rid of a little bit more of this fabric. Let's do that. If I look at these scissors, man. So I just didn't want any long tails to get in the way. I mean, it's cute even without the flowers, but I think the flowers will will add that little touch. So, okay, so I'm going to put some hot glue in here pretty generously and step back and <laughs> get nowhere near the the glue. Okay, and let's get a white one in there. And 
needing another glue stick here. Okay, and let's do another white one in here. Figure out how to put it. That'll work. Okay. So far, it's looking good. Okay, I'm going to put another one of these red flowers over here, just kind of in on the top. Using a good amount of glue here. Kind of wish there were more leaves on these. Maybe I can pull a couple leaves. I mean, there's some in there, but here's one that's just kind of by itself. Maybe we can put it down in here. So I also picked some pine cones tonight. Not picked them, but um, <laughs> they were falling on the ground. But it's probably like a weird time of the year to pick pine cones because they were, um, were a lot of green ones, plus it had rained today, so a lot of them were real wet. <laughs> so it was kind of gross. Yeah, if I had had those little pumpkins that they sell at the Dollar Tree, the styrofoam ones, this little job would have been a whole lot easier. I'm just going to try. I just pulled that right off, so that'll work. Okay, we need a flower in here. That way I don't have those plastic stems, or the wire stems to worry about. This will cover up our flowers a little better. All right, um, I think we should throw another leaf in there, leaves. Like a hot glue magnet tonight. All right, let's see what we got here. I think we need one more right there. We'll do white, and I'm just going to put it on the flower. Just stick it in there. What do you think? I think it's cute. Um, so we have this little bit of jute hanging down, and I'd like to see some little curly cues, but um, not sure if you can do that with uh, twine. You know how you do that with ribbon? Put the scissors on it and pull it back. Well. We'll figure that one out later, but I'd say this is a one and done. So we'll set that one aside and make some room here. I just happen to have this little cute little pedestal, so that looks really cute on there. Um, that might have to go with me tomorrow for the display. Okay, so let's get this. And let's do the same thing with the ball again. Um, Let's put a little hot glue and on this base. Okay. 
hold that down there a minute. Okay. Now, what's our plan of attack this time? This time we have um, the fabric was only 45 inches wide and I got a half yard. So I think that thickness is going to help us. And. Hmm. I'm almost thinking that quarters might be the way to go because I think I can get. Well, that won't go the whole way up. Um, what do you think? Because if I put it on like this. This won't go the whole way up to the side, but we might be able to camouflage that. Okay, let's see something here. So that's about up to there. Um, okay, I'm going to cut a little bit of this off, and once again, we'll just go for it. The good thing about plaid is you have we have lines on there to cut on. So you know you're cutting it straight. <laughs> so this is, in fact, plaid. Someone I heard earlier today looking at something like that, and she said, well, some people call it buffalo check. Well, this isn't buffalo check. This is plaid. I'm going to show you buffalo check later. but So let's see which is the right side of this fabric. I think I have the right side up, so I'm going to flip it. Okay, so this is our center, like right about here. So I'm going to put the ball down here. I'm going to put a little hot glue and put the ball down. And this time I'm just going to pull up the sides and I'm going to put a little glue there. And I, <laughs> I deflated the ball. You know what though? I'm going to keep going, but that made me jump. I'm going to keep going. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> well, we definitely have a lot less... Um, We can gather more because we don't have to make it as big. Oh my gosh. But now it's it's tiny. So my worst fears came true. I broke my ball. <laughs> and I have hot glue strings on my glasses. My heavens. Alright, so, um, well, there's no, no recovery from this, I don't think. Um, just trying to think what to do. Hmm. Okay, well, I have nothing else in its place, but I'm thinking, could I stuff it? Do I have anything to stuff it with? I have to admit it was kind of funny. Okay, well I have some paper towels here. I think I'm just gonna maybe make some stuffing here. It's not exactly what we had. This is gonna be a very limp pumpkin. I'll tell you what, <laughs> this isn't going to work. Um, I'm going to put this up a little bit so we can talk. So anyway, that, that was pretty funny, I think, but, um, <laughs> but it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to get something else round to put in there. So right now, I don't have anything offhand. 
So we'll do our other project and then I will of course follow up and show you the finished result because I'm not going to stop until I get my plaid pumpkin. Um, but I, I think it was going to be kind of pretty. I was going to put some sunflowers on the plaid and maybe a couple leaves. I think it was going to be really pretty. But we'll, we'll find something else to make it work. So, um, so now we're going to stencil a pillow. And we're going to talk about, this is Buffalo Check. Okay, this is a Buffalo Check stencil from Dixie Bell, and it's new. And I haven't even used it yet. So we'll take it out of the package here. And I have a pillow cover from Ikea. It is the Girly pillow cover, G-U-R-L-I. I mean, I'm thinking that's one of the Swedish names that I am not screwing up. Okay, so here's what our stencil looks like. And let me get the pillow cover. So this is what you're buying at Ikea. I think it is probably $3 and something. So it's a really good deal. It's a 20 by 20 inch pillow cover and it has a zipper in it, so it's a nice size. Um, I'm gonna take this out. I'm just gonna cut this tag out. Okay, so, um, so I actually have, a, here's what we're gonna use. I'm gonna use the wrapper from the stencil and put inside here. And I'll put this down so you can see. But whenever you stencil a pillow cover or a shirt or anything like that, you want to put uh, something in between the layers so that the paint doesn't bleed through the other side. Okay. We have that down pretty good. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of center this on here because we don't have to cover the whole thing. Okay, now I don't, you could tape it down if you wanted to. I'm just going to kind of hold it in place. Get some of these fabric scraps out of here. I can't believe I burst my ball. Oh well. <laughs> so the uh, paint I'm going to use is Dixie Bell's Anchor, which is a black paint in uh, the silk. The silk line, which is um, has a built-in primer and sealer. So for fabric, that's probably not going to mean too much for us, but um, but I still think it's going to be a perfect paint for this application. I have a paper plate here, uh, mainly because I'm going to take most of the paint back off of the brush. I don't want a lot of paint like I use whenever I do a silk screen stencil. So remember, you're putting a layer of plastic or cardboard or something in between the pillow case so that you don't get bleed through onto the other side. I'm just using the one color. Uh, you could get fancy if you want to, but I kind of wanted to experiment with this one and see um, what it looked like with just using the black on the uh, fabric here, which the fabric's kind of an off-white, so I think it'll give it kind of a nice uh, 
holiday look, farmhouse look. I don't be great for fall and on into the holidays because you can mix it with, um, you know, the, the fall color pillows or, or other pillows now and throws. And then later on, you can mix it with your holiday colors. So I'm really hoping we don't have a big COVID outbreak and things go back to the way they were before. I'm just really hoping that we have a wonderful holiday season this year. I think we're, uh, as the holidays approach, I think we're going to be a little more grateful and thankful and happy to be around our family this year after the way things were last year. So. That is my wish. I'd love to peel this back and look at it, but we're going to have to wait for the suspense. <laughs> This is actually the perfect size stencil for on this pillow cover. Now, if I were um, using this stencil on wood, like a piece of furniture or um, on paper, it is a little different when you're working with fabric just because the fabric does absorb the paint a little more easily. But still, you want to remove as much paint as you can from the brush. Because you don't want bleed through. Bleed through is when you have too much paint on your brush and it goes underneath the stencil and then you don't get a real crisp image. Well, I totally know that I'm going to have a blister. My fingers are just... <laughs> not happy. <laughs> I'll probably put ice on it. <laughs> so have you heard of biorhythms? Do you believe in biorhythms? If I might just be having a low biorhythm day. That could be it. this since I'm brushing over here. Ah, I shifted the stencil a little bit. Back to the low biorhythms. Of course I did. <laughs> I just saw a really cute chair, I think it was on Pinterest or something, and the chair was painted this color, um, you know, like an ivory color, and this there was a houndstooth check on it, and it was just black like this, no, no like mixture of different colors, not houndstooth, uh, buffalo check, and it was really, really cute, really distressed and everything, it was, I loved it. 
So I think I'm just going to love this pillow just as much. So Thursday, we have warnings that our temperature is going to go up to 103. Um, I know, you know, lots other places have a lot hotter weather than we do, so I can't imagine what it's going to be like for them. Just be careful. Like, like I said, you know, tape would be good, but I'm being a maverick and not using tape. So I just have to be careful. So if you, um, there are ways to paint traditional buff buffalo plaid um, where it's done with several different colors, like three different colors. And I actually have tutorials, I believe I do. I'm pretty sure I've done uh, the buffalo plaid on my YouTube channel where you take the um, tape and section it off. I have to go back through all my videos and kind of organize them a little bit as my channel grows in case anybody wants to go look at some old videos. There's probably a lot of old videos I'd probably rather just get rid of at this point. <laughs> There's a string in there or something, which is weird. You get a paper towel. Okay, I'll go back to holding this. Like I shifted it again, but okay. I'm gonna come over here and do this corner and work my way down. So I think I'm a little off camera. Just hang tight there. think of a poem that's in my head. When things go wrong as they sometimes will and the road you're traveling seems all uphill and that's all I can remember. <laughs> Help me out if you remember that. So there's a string in here. I don't know what it's a string of. Seems like thread. <laughs> We're having a huge Dixie Bell order delivered tomorrow. That always makes me happy. Seeing all that beautiful paint. Okay, we're getting there guys. We're like about half finished. Um, I know it's a little bit time consuming with this small pattern all over this pillow, but I'm so anxious to show it to you and to see it myself and I don't want to risk uh, removing the stencil at this point in time. So bear with me guys. guys and gals.
When you stencil, you can use a pouncing motion or a swirling motion. You just kind of want to watch when you're swirling that you don't get the, the brush underneath the stencil. So on these diagonal ones, kind of doing a combination of both. Okay, I feel like I'm way off there. Shift it a little bit. Need a little more paint here. Sometimes you can just get rid of a lot of paint if you know you have your brush too full, you know, in one area. You can offload it actually on the stencil itself too, like these areas. Um, if you have too much, you can kind of do that as well. Some people like to put the brush on that first and then work, work away from it. So. funny, I kind of gotten spoiled with the silkscreen stencils because you don't offload your brush with that. Um, you just, you want a good amount of paint and then you work it into the, the screen. But this is different. And again, let me just stress, if I was working on wood, I would be taking, I would not be using this amount of paint. I would be offloading it so that I didn't get paint underneath the stencil. A little bit goes a long way. We're getting there guys, we're almost done. I'm gonna have to shift this whole thing up. And I think I'm gonna do that right now. So, <laughs> wish me luck. The way my day has been going. I think we were successful. I can't wait for the reveal. I can't wait to lift this up. Okay, and again, I did shift a little bit. I can see that. So you really, I know we discussed this before, but you really could use this pillow cover anytime if you're using, you know, if you have the farmhouse decor, because buffalo plant is really big with it. But again, so versatile, because you can just dress it up or down or whatever. This would be a cool stencil to use on, um, like I said, on a chair or on, um, cabinetry, like a, on, a, on an inset on the doors or something, I think that would look cool, or on the sides of furniture. If you wanted the full color look, um, I would probably use the tape method. 
but this is really cool, I think, for, for this look. And again, you could tape this stencil off, too, if you wanted, and do different colors, or maybe you wouldn't even have to tape it to do that. But I kind of just want to see, because obviously the ones that are these lines, the diagonal ones, is supposed to kind of represent a lighter color of the the check the solid check ones. So that's why I think you can get away with using just one color for it. two rows, baby. We are almost there. So I'm loving my ugly duckly, ugly duckling project. I'm excited about it. I think it looks really cool. Can't wait to reveal that. That one will be, I think, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. My step by step. Last check. do that different. <laughs> I know that would be weird, but some quilters will do an odd block um, just as a signature, I guess. Alrighty, I'm going to put the lid on the paint, make you wait an extra second. Still cannot believe that ball broke. <laughs> Now I gotta get a new ball or something before tomorrow to put in there, but I will. Okay, I'm gonna lift it up. One, two, three. Okay. I think that's cute. Um, with a pillow in it, it's gonna be really cute. Now I, you can see there are some areas that I did, um, you know, just shift a little bit or it wasn't real clear. You know what, I'm okay with that because it sort of looks distressed. Um, you actually can take sandpaper to this when it's dry and distress it a little bit and you wouldn't even notice that then. So um, that, that I think would be a cool thing to do, but I like it. I really like it. I think it looks really cool. It's going to look cool with a pillow in it and with other colors. So I'm all for it. I'm here for it, as they say. So, uh, let's see. We've been on just about an hour. Um, I think that it's time for me to go. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. Um, join me Thursday for more about decor. And I've been doing all kinds of flea market flips and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, join me then on Saturday for Step by Step. So thank you for joining me and have a wonderful night.